in the beginning I came, I was like, the first time in my life I worked with strangers and they don't speak my language and they are different culture. They are from a country thousand miles away. So I was a little bit like hesitant. I don't know their culture. I don't know what I should do. Where does it look funny? Or... But day by day, we start doing missions and all that. So the band gets stronger, stronger. And I felt like I'm the special here. Like all these guys like me. All of them respect me. I think because I was like kind of the connection to the world and I was civilian, there's no ranks, nothing. Because when you soldier and NCO, you have to keep that kind of little bit of distance, respect. And But I'm civilian, so all of them shown their real personality, how they are easy, open. They don't really care about a lot of things as long as you get along with them. Yeah, and, and I had a real good time. In spite of, I lost my brother two months before that, he passed away. And my mom passed away while I was working with them. I think it was in December. But even after all that, those guys, they gave me big relief. I have like, imagine you have a family of 150. That's how I felt all platoons from the captain to the lowest rank, all of them liked me, always laughing, joking. Yeah, it was a good time, even when we went through a lot of hardship. Back then, in the beginning of the war, we weren't like scared or we are a target. Probably from small section, which is like those who were loyal to Saddam and felt they lost everything, we were a target for them. And still, I was thinking about dreams, how is Iraq getting better and gonna rebuild, make it more, look more developed. But after the, the insurgency in the West, where the Sunni regions started the Shia insurgency, and mostly the, 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 the Jam or Jaish al Mahdi, that's where it started. We had a lot of pressure because right now we're getting pressure from two sides. Those people who we are belong to, me personally, and the other people who we are not belong to, they already targeting us. And that's when you're getting too hard right now. You don't, even, you don't even feel safe when you go to your neighborhood. And I was always telling soldiers, I feel like safer here than I go into my house because I'm here at least with you, so we could, you could protect me. But when I'm going home, I'm gonna be easy target. It doesn't need that much force to, to assassinate me. And that kept going for years and years, and I got direct threat on my phone. Somebody called me and said, there is a, I forgot the name of the organization. They found their name, your name, and they want to talk to you, and they're trying to fix it for you. He's kind of like trying to attract me to go somewhere, and at the same time, it's kind of threat because that group was notorious, was like executing people, and I think they executed a couple of journalists or on TV, behated them. So they were very, they have very bad reputation. Yeah, and I stayed for years, I, I'm very careful. Drive in, go to my college. I, I skipped that year in college because I felt it's too hard right now. The assassinations in Baghdad was on the highest level. And I think that was just after the, the conflict or civil war between Sunni and Shia, when Sunni groups or that's what's the, the claim or related to Al-Qaeda exploded the Shia shrine in north of Baghdad in Samarra. And that's when the conflict was on the highest scale. It was like fighting in the streets and a lot of innocent people died from both sides. Car bombs, assassinations, and a lot of people that have nothing to do with that. But because they consider it belong to this side, so they are target. I lost personally my two cousins. One of them, I gave him a ride, I remember, like a week to his uh, base. He was working uh, 
the national police, and Iraq is, was. That's how the situation. He asked, he, he borrowed money from me to pay it to those people, so they hire him. And after a month or so, I gave him a ride to his base. He was in you know, Andorra area. It's kind of southwest of Baghdad. And a car bomb rammed the gate and killed him. I, I went to the place where they put his body, but my, my other cousin told me he's like cut to two pieces. And I went inside and I saw another person dead. I couldn't dare to look at my cousin. And I felt like sick and very depressed. And I, I, I did the right thing, I didn't look my cousin. It's too hard to see 